Many moons ago, TFB TV ran a shameful video explaining several reasons not to like lever action rifles. It's a little known fact that the staff of TFB TV isn't actually just one person with several different Scooby Doo masks. We are, in fact, unique people with our own diverse opinions. Some of us like booty shorts while others wear big boy pants. Some of us understand the finer things in life and appreciate 10 millimeter, while others prefer wimpier European cartridges. And I have to separate from the crowd on this issue as well. I like lever action rifles. To be honest, some of it is really purely aesthetic. The lines and curves of a lever action are distinctly and classically American. Remember when you used to buy guns because they looked cool or they were fun? Then the internet ruined all that by forcing everyone to debate against our will to determine the most logical, rational, practical choice for everything. The answer was the AR-15 and the Glock, of course, but holding and shooting a lever action makes you feel like a proper American. Saturday afternoon reruns of westerns probably color my opinion somewhat, and the appearance of lever action rifles in some of my favorite games probably doesn't hurt either. I just like lever actions. So with that in mind, it's probably best to acknowledge a healthy degree of bias as I list some of the other, more objective reasons that I like lever actions. Number five. Ammo compatibility. Lever action rifles are commonly chambered in handgun cartridges. Now, I know, you're probably thinking, who cares, they're only chambered in revolver cartridges. Okay, so first of all, fair enough, they really should make lever actions in auto pistol cartridges. Like, a 9mm lever action would be pretty dope. If my calculations are correct, based on cartridge overall length, a Rossi M92 that normally holds 12 rounds of 357 in the magazine would hold 16 rounds of 9mm. But that's not important right now. You're right that most handgun cartridges you'll find in a lever action are revolver cartridges. And you know, maybe that isn't super practical for urban carry. But revolvers are practical for hiking, camping, backpacking, and other outdoor activities. Lots of folks carry revolvers in the backcountry because they want a little bit more power than you can get from an auto pistol. So having a long gun that can take the same ammo makes a good deal of sense. Which brings us to the next point. Power. Lever action rifles chambered in 357 Magnum and 44 Magnum are pretty common. Maybe handgun cartridge isn't really synonymous in your mind with raw power, and you're not wrong for that. But 357 and 44 are pretty potent in their own right when fired from handguns, and when they're fired from a 16-inch rifle barrel, these calibers totally wake up. It's almost as if they become something entirely different. 357 Magnum fired from a carbine produces temporary stretch cavity, fragmentation and expansion that can hang with intermediate rifle cartridges like 300 Blackout. And 44 Magnum is so much more. It's like 10 pounds of Balkan atrocity stuffed into a five gallon abattoir. But even 44 Magnum is honestly a little pedestrian compared to the absolutely gonzo calibers you can find in lever action rifles. I recently did some shooting with a Marlin model 1895 chambered in 4570. That thing is an absolute unit. It is capable of pushing a 430 grain chunk of lead at about 1700 feet per second. Maybe that just sounds like some numbers to you, so here's another way of looking at it. A respectable muzzle velocity for a 125 grain 357 Magnum is 1500 feet per second. So this bullet is three and a half times heavier and still moving 200 feet per second faster than an average 357 mag. Or maybe it's a little bit more apples to apples to compare a 240 grain 44 Magnum fired from a 16 inch barrel. That'll get you about 1600 feet per second. And with a bullet that's a little more than half as heavy as this 4570 load. If you told me that I would need a gun to defend myself from Velociraptors tomorrow, this is probably gonna be really high on my list. Number three. 
Anytime you compare one gun to another gun, you're going to find a variety of things that a gun is good for and some stuff that it isn't. That's certainly the case for lever action rifles too. There are some things that lever action rifles aren't the best choice for. Like maybe it isn't in heavy rotation in the pipe hitters union for whacking terrorist dirt bags. But as guns go, lever action rifles tend to be pretty good at a lot of different things because they're slim and they don't have a protruding magazine, but at the same time, they still hold more rounds than most bolt action rifles tend to. They're convenient to carry and store. A, a lever action can realistically perform almost any task that a civilian would ask of a gun, except concealed carry. Even in cases where it isn't the best possible choice, a lever action rifle is still probably a fairly decent choice. Number two. Legality and optics. No, not that kind of optics. Although, there's something about an old style rifle with a modern optical sight on it that makes me feel all naughty. No, I mean optics in the context of perception. One really neat thing about manually operated guns is that there are few restrictions on them in most places. Even states and countries that are well known for restrictive gun laws are usually pretty cool with lever action rifles. There are other types of firearm that might be legal in these restricted places, but not many can bring the power, capacity, and speed that lever action rifles offer. On the face of it, a lever action 357 mag carbine is a poor choice for home defense when compared to, say, an AR-15. But if you live somewhere that ARs aren't legal, or you plan to travel to such a place, that 357 lever starts looking a lot more attractive. Whether or not it is legal to own a scary rifle, it might not be popular. Now, I've been critical in the past of people who recommend against using the most effective tool legally available for fear of an overzealous prosecutor. And I still believe that surviving the fight should be your first, second, and third considerations. But I understand that some of you live in places where even if your scary, salted weapon is technically legal, there is a non-zero chance of being railroaded at trial if you were to ever actually use it for defense. If you consider that to be a real possibility, maybe the small loss in performance is worth having better optics when you find yourself judged by 12 people who are too stupid to get out of jury duty. <laughs> cool. No, just that. Lever action rifles are sexy, cool, badass Americana. We have a tendency to try to justify every single gun purchase in pragmatic terms. If it isn't the best possible choice for one specific narrow application, then it's complete rubbish. Bullshit. Guns are fun, and lever action rifles are so chock full of fun that it leaks out of every scene. You don't need to prove anything to anybody. Buy what you like and shoot what you want. So long as you are being safe and having fun, why would any grown ass man ever think he has any business telling another man what to like? Don't get me wrong. I do believe that lever guns have some really practical reasons to like them. And this is current year. There's no reason you need to confine yourself to the 19th century. Add a pick rail and an optic to your lever action and make it that much cooler. I added this XS Sights mount and Vortex Venom Mini Red Dot because it helps to... You know what? I just put these on there because I like the lever action rifle and Fallout and it reminds me of that. Suck it! Guns are fun! And really, that's my point for the whole video. Guns are fun, and it's okay to like stuff that other people don't like. Remember when you were a kid and you liked stuff just because it was fun? You didn't know that other people didn't like it or that it wasn't hip? Well, you can still do that. You don't have to prove a damn thing to that douche with the keyboard. No, lever guns might not be perfect for some practical applications, but they're pretty good for others, and they're a lot of fun. I hope this video was fun for you. If it was, and you'd like to see more content like this, please bear in mind that it takes a lot to bring quality content to you for free, despite YouTube's efforts to suppress our reach. You don't owe us a damn thing. But you can help yourself to see more content like this by engaging with videos you enjoy. So please, like, 
share, subscribe, and comment. You can also help us by supporting the sponsors that make this content possible. Ventura Munitions provided the ammo that I used to shoot this video. Take a moment, look at what they have in stock. If you want to find out how to rent a Phantom V642 or other high-speed camera like the one that I used for this video, contact Aimed Research. Their contact info is in the doobly-doo.